Okay, I have some uh, technical info for you here that will go under the tactics. So this falls in the field craft category. We're going to be discussing anti-tank penetration capabilities of different man portable anti-tank weapon systems. We're going to be looking at disposable launchers and missiles. We are not looking at cruisers. We are not looking at tows. We are not looking at the uh, SPG-9 in Russian service and other anti-tank weapons. We are looking at the stuff that the individual troop can carry for an operation to use against an enemy bunker or to use in an ambush. Now, first off, we're going to start with the granddaddy of them. M72 Law Rocket Series produced in the United States. It is also under contract with NATO countries. This is very common around the world. The A2, A3, and A5 models can penetrate reportedly up to 300 millimeters of armor. The A4 model, 350 millimeters of armor. The armor that is being calculated for in all of these values is RHA, Rolled Homogeneous Armor, Steel Plate. We are not talking laminated armor. We are not talking composite armor. That changes the values drastically, typically lowers them. Now, next up, we have a NATO standard that's been phasing out the M72 Law Rocket series. The M136 AT4, produced in Sweden by Saab, can penetrate up to 400 millimeters of armor. The reason they call it the AT4 is because it has an 84 millimeter warhead. The M72 had a 66 millimeter warhead. The N Law, which is replacing the AT4 across NATO now, primarily in British service but it is going through the other NATO countries now. According to Saab, can penetrate 500 millimeters of armor. And I got a feeling they lowballed that number on their website from some of the pictures that I've seen. Now, we get into the more common anti-tank missiles, man portables. The Javelin designation FGM-148. Online, they say it can penetrate 600 to 800 millimeters of armor. I am qualified on a Javelin, and I can tell you that's on the low side. But that's what they're reporting. Now, missile system that's been out longer. It's all over the world on the international arms market. The Milan, a standard in NATO service produced in France. The Milan 1 can penetrate 350 millimeters of armor. The Milan II, which is the most common, can penetrate 550 millimeters of armor. The Milan IIT can penetrate 800 millimeters of armor. There is references online that a Milan can penetrate up to 1,000 millimeters of armor, but it says it's only with a certain version of it, but does not tell you which missile that is. Now into the former Comblock countries, former Warsaw Pact countries. This is stuff that is in the hands of NATO. It is also used around the world. First off, the Russian response to the M72, the RPG-18, can penetrate 300 to 375 millimeters of armor. Its replacement, the RPG-26, has a larger warhead than the RPG-18, can penetrate 440 millimeters of armor. The RPG-26 is the most common disposable anti-tank rocket launcher system in the Russian military. Currently, it is fielded by the Ukrainians and the Russians. Now, the RPG-7, I'm going to give you a list of... Uh, different warheads, different rockets for the RPG-7 system, but overall the anti-tank rockets can penetrate between 260 to 750 millimeters of armor. Now the base rocket 
The PG-7V can penetrate 260 millimeters of armor. It is a single warhead. It's the older version. The PG-7L or 7VL is a single warhead, can penetrate up to 500 millimeters of armor. The newer rocket that is out there, the PG-7VR, it is a dual warhead rocket. I have heard it referred to as the Vampire, but I cannot confirm that. Now I got some weird numbers on this one. No resp explosive reactive armor can penetrate 600 millimeters of armor. If there's explosive reactive armor, supposedly it can penetrate 750 millimeters of armor. My personal belief is they had those numbers reversed. Now we'll get into Soviet, former Soviet, into current Russian anti-tank missiles going from older to newer. The AT-4 Spigot, Russian designation, the 9K111 Faggot, penetrative capabilities, 500 to 600 millimeters of armor. The AT-5 Spandrel, Russian designation, 9M113 Conkers, penetrates up to 925 millimeters of armor. I know we were scared shitless of those being on the international arms market back in the 90s after the Soviet Union fell because that thing was definitely capable of penetrating M1 Abrams. The AT-13 Metis M, it is a dual warheaded rocket. Russian designation 9K115-2, also known as Metis M. Penetration capabilities on steel, 1,000 millimeters against explosive reactive armor and steel, 900 millimeters of armor. Now we're going to look at some more common tanks that are out there that are on the market that any of these weapon systems could potentially be used for. But I'll make this note. RPG-18 M72 Law Rocket, you're not probably going to get even a mobility kill on a main battle tank unless you take out the drive sprocket or you somehow are able to get it hit a uh, hit right on the turret ring, that uh, junction between the turret and the hull. Both of those launchers would be capable, though, of taking out most armored personnel carriers and infantry fighting vehicles that are out there, both NATO and Russian production. Now, and we will see if the camera will cooperate this time. First one we are looking at is a base model T-72, most common out there, other than a T-55. T-55, you probably can take it out with an M-72 or an RPG-18. Now, T-72, this is one that we do know armor thickness is on because a lot of these have been captured over the years. The frontal armor, the glacius plate, actual straight line thickness is around 200 millimeters. But because of the angle, it takes, it has an equivalency of 500 to 600 millimeters of armor. The side of the hull, reportedly 400 to 490 millimeters of armor, depending on its location. 400 being more likely to the back, 490 in the troop compartment. The turret itself, max thickness, is 280 millimeters of armor. Now, if it is equipped with contact five, which is the more common explosive reactive armor in the Russian military, it then has a armor equivalency of 940 millimeters of armor against 
high explosive anti-tank warheads. And here's a T-72 with explosive reactive armor. I cannot say it for sure if this is contact 5. You got the rear view of the tank up here. Some identifying features to me has always been on the side of the turret, the left side of the turret, you have a big tube there. That is where the snorkel goes for when the tank is going to be fording a river. The top, you have a 12.7 millimeter machine gun typically mounted for any aircraft rolls and you have stowage bins on the right side and rear of the tank this location right here they can carry two fuel drums to extend the range the log right here is for extraction capabilities what they do they put it on the front or the back of the track they chain it or wire it onto there and then they use that to as a solid point that they can use to extract themselves from a very muddy situation. The T-72 is equipped with a 125 millimeter main gun, has a coax 7.62 millimeter. It is the main gun is capable of firing anti-tank guided missiles that are specifically designed for that purpose. Weak points on the T-72 is obviously the rear. The rear is plate armor. It is angled. So you'd have to be careful. Also, obviously, underneath. Now, T-72, it, the main gun is fed with an auto loader. So there is an, an ammunition carousel located directly underneath the turret, right on the floor. The top of the auto loader is the floor of the turret for the two man crew inside. Two man, I'm talking in the turret. You had the commander and the gunner. The only other per per person inside the vehicle is the driver. Now, there is lots of footage showing a hit from underneath right on the auto loader, and this goes for all of the newer Russian tanks, T 72 and newer. A direct hit from underneath on that autoloader will cause that tank to explode and the tank essentially disintegrates. It is also vulnerable to top attack from weapons like the Javelin and the N-Law. Without explosive reactive armor you can take this thing out pretty damn easily with an N-Law with an AT-4 with potentially an RPG-26 and depending on what type of rocket you have, the RPG-7 and all of the older AT-4 to newer Russian anti-tank guided missiles. Oh, should mention here, this is a Mike one model on the older T-72s do not have this V-shaped trim vein here. This is for when the tank goes through the water, it keeps the water from coming up and soaking the driver. It kind of directs it away. Underneath here, you have a self-entrenching blade. Russian tanks, T-72 and newer, can dig themselves in. Next tank we got up here is the T-80. Not as common on the international market. And first I'm going to zoom in on the identification photo I was able to pull up. If the camera cooperates. We're having problems with the camera now. I think it's starting to wear out. T-80 main battle tank. This has a gas turbine engine. It was meant to replace the T-72, but it was not... Uh, it works. Doesn't work great, but it works. Has a gas turbine like an M1. The armor on a T-80, hard to get some hard uh, concrete numbers on this, but it's estimated to be between 450 and 650 millimeters of armor. The side of the tank, 
without any explosive reactive armor is thought to be 550 to 575 millimeters of armor. Max thickness on the turret is thought to be Max thickness on the turret is thought to be 650 millimeters of armor. When it is equipped with Contact 5 explosive reactive armor, it has a armor equivalent against high explosive anti-tank warheads of 1,320 millimeters. This picture is at the International Arms Expo where Russia was trying to sell them on the international arms market. Some countries have purchased them, but not in huge numbers. This picture down here is a T-80 with what's supposed to be contact five explosive reactive armor. If it has larger explosive reactive armor panels, that's probably relic. And then up here, Identification feature between the T-72 and the T-80. You have the snorkel on the back of the turret. It is a massive tube that goes all the way across the back. There is a grill here in the center surrounded by armor plate on the rear. That would be the place you'd probably get your best shot with older anti-tank weapons. Next up. M1 Abrams. Information on this is obviously pretty classified. It's, I can't get any hard numbers. But the armor thickness is thought to be between 350 to 700 millimeters, depending on location. It's equivalent against high explosive anti-tank warheads, depending on location, is 700 to 1300 millimeters. Remember, the M1 Abrams is equipped with Chobdom composite armor. The rear of the tank, one massive grill going across right into the pack. The M1 Abrams has been exported around the world now. Next up, the more common tank that's on the international arms market from NATO, the Leopard 2A4. Now, the estimates on the armor here is really all over the place, but we're looking at between 525 to about 780 millimeters versus high explosive anti-tank warheads. It's thought to be 660 to 1100 millimeters because it has composite armor. The rear of the tank. Upper is a grill that goes all the way across. Lower is steel plate. The next tank I'm throwing in here because this could be uh, being seen in the news a lot more. Chinese Type 96. No information as to how thick the armor is. The Chinese state that it has a armor equivalency against high explosive anti-tank rockets of 1,000 millimeters. There is supposed to be explosive reactive armor out there that can be put on this. It has a uh, comparable main gun to the T-72, T-80. Its effectiveness will be based on ammunition. It has a 12.7 millimeter mounted up on the roof and believed to have a coax 7.62. Here is the rear of the tank. Rear of the tank, grill on the upper, plate on the lower. Uh, let me double check. Nope, I screwed that up. It's plate going all the way across. So it's essentially like the older Russian tanks. They had armor plate going all the way across the rear. You can look up for yourself some of the pictures to find better ones for doing a class for that if you give one. But you got some information. You get an idea of what type of weapons could potentially defeat those vehicles. Now, for all my engineer brothers and the Patriot and Militia movements, always remember, essay